Hello and welcome to AC's 8-Bit Zone. Well, it's just after Thanksgiving and it's been one busy week. But I have some EEPROM adapters that I've been building lately that I just had to show you. So let's take a look at two or three projects that I've had going on lately. If you have a Commodore or a Coco, you've probably needed EEPROM adapters in the past. Or maybe you will need them and you just don't know it yet. So here's a Coco 2 that has two of the 24-pin ROMs. Here's a Commodore 64 that has three of the 24-pin ROMs. Now, unless you stocked up on loads and loads of the 24-pin ROMs back in the day, it's becoming much harder to find them anymore. So uh, most of us are able to easily get the 28-pin ROMs. So here's some electrically er erasable ones. Um, I have some others that are UV erasable. And uh, here's a part number. Uh, this is the STM27C256. So this video is going to apply to the, uh, you could use some, uh, let's see, you could use, you could use the eight kilobyte parts. So those would be like the 27C64s. You could use the 27C32s. But I've been buying the 256s and 512s so that I have four or eight banks for ROM images. This is a nice little adapter that uh, Dennis Bisson designed. I'll put a link to his video up above or at least down below in the, in the description. But what this is, is this is for the Coco. Uh, I believe this works for the Coco 1. I've used it in the Coco 2. But for the Coco 1 or Coco 2, you can place this in the uh, Color Basic ROM socket and you can test the RAM on the board and you don't need to have any functioning RAM because this test program runs, runs completely out of ROM. A uh, very cool program and uh, I needed to adapt from the, the 24 pin to the 28 pin because again, I had plenty of these parts on hand. And as you can see, I've included a three dip switch so I can, so I've included three dip switches so that I can switch out up to eight different banks of ROM. And here's another useful little device. This is the inverse. This is a 28 pin to 24 pin adapter. I needed this because the uh, the programmer that I use, the EEPROM programmer, didn't seem to have a uh, didn't seem to have a configuration for a 24 pin ROM. So if you want to read a 24 pin ROM with my with my EEPROM programmer, you have to tell it that it's a 28 pin ROM. Tell it to ignore the ID. You know, read the part anyway, even though it doesn't match the expected ID, and uh, this has the, the same wiring as, as this, but it's just, uh, the, it fits a 28 pin socket and adapts the 24 pin part to that 28 pin socket. The third one that I'm gonna show you is a low profile solution. So what if you wanna put a ROM in a cartridge pack? This, this type of setup is much too tall to fit inside this package. So just take a look inside and look at the challenge that you have in placing this stack up of adapters inside. It's just much too tall and you couldn't fit the top case on. So I'll show you how I made this right angle adapter that is a much lower profile and fits easily inside this cartridge. And here are all the connections that you're going to need to make the adapter. So on the inside, I've drawn the pin out of the 24 pin part and, and the socket on the board. And then around the outside, I'm showing the pin out of the 28 pin EEPROM. So uh, as you can see, all the pins on the left side are pin to pin compatible with the larger pin package and there's a couple of extra address pins up here on the left. Over on the right side, there are gonna be five pins that you need to cut 
short and rewire to, to different pins that, that don't match straight across. So it's here, 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 and here. So one, two, three, four. I think there's going to be a fifth pin. Yeah, so, uh, so there's about four pins on the original footprint that don't map straight across. And up here there are two new pins. Notice one of those is VCC, pin 28 to pin 24. And there's a couple of new address pins over here. Uh, the, and the output enable on the new EPROMs is permanently enabled by tying strapping to ground. The chip enable is on a different pin. It actually has to cross up to the chip enable here. And address 11 moved from here to there. But these remappings are easily accommodated as I'll show you in just a minute. Notice that I have three pull-up resistors. They pull the three new address pins, which are A15, 14, and 13. They pull them up to VCC, so you close one, of the, one or more of the switches to set those signals to zero. So if you wanted bank zero, you would close all three switches, and all three of the upper address pins would go to ground. But let's say you wanted to select bank one, well then just open the lower switch, S0, and uh, A13 would then go high, that's bank one. And then you could select any one of the other upper banks just with uh, these three selector switches. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to remove the old ROM and place some insulating tape down the board. And that's just going to help prevent us from causing any shorts to the board while we're soldering. And those are two right angle connectors. Okay, next you're going to install the two right angle connectors. These are square pins. And notice that four of the pins are cut short. And then prepare a small piece of board to mount the dip switches. You only need enough holes in the board to connect to the last two rows of pins on the dip 28. And here is the piece of board soldered to the dip 28 and three resistors have been placed just below the dip switches. Here's the back side. So the three resistors have just been ganged together and they're going to be tied to VCC. Okay, next, I found the easiest way to make the wiring connections is to actually flip the top socket upside down and just to the right and then make plenty of, of length of wire to make the connections easier to make. And uh, so all the wire connections being made, then you're going to place the, the socket back down just over the right angle connectors. Notice that the ROM socket is shifted to the right just to the point so that the pins of the socket just meet at the ends of the right angle pins. And so any of the right angle pins that you left full length just solder directly to the socket pin and uh, any other and any of the short pins on the right angle connector have been connected by the wires and I'm using 28 gauge wire wrap wire also notice that the socket pins don't go all the way down and touch the kept on tape the kept on tape has high heat resistance but I didn't want to uh, stress it with a lot of heat from the soldering tip. So it's 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 lifted just up above the level of the tape and uh, that way there are no close calls and, and making any shorts from the socket down to the main board. The sockets that I use are the ones with round pins. And here's a finished look from the top down with the programmed ROM in place. And the dip switches are switched to bank one. To select bank zero, I would move all the switches to the left and they'd all be in the closed position. And here's a good 360 degree look around the work. 
this side of the socket is definitely the easiest. As you can see, all the pins of the socket just directly connect to the right angle connectors. There's the three resistors. And definitely, oh, and, and if you work carefully with the soldering iron, there's plenty of room to dodge the, the plastic. There's plenty of room to dodge the plastic mounting hole. So for this ROM, I had this floppy disk controller just sitting around, not getting much use. So I wanted to have a drive wire compatible color basic on this ROM. So, um, so now the ROM has disk extended color basic 1.1, which is what was originally installed in this socket. That's in bank zero. And then in bank one, I added HDB DOS for the color computer two. And now I can uh, boot to drive wire instantly when I power on the Coco. So I always leave uh, this ROM in, in the uh, bank one position and I'm picking up HDB DOS. And HDB DOS has, has everything you need in it for disk, disk extended color basic plus the extensions that are required to operate DriveWire 3. And uh, this is so nice, it closes easily, the case closes easily on the, the low profile ROM and we'll go install this in the Coco and power up to DriveWire 3. Yeah, so I just love having the instant on HDB DOS because for the longest time I was loading HDB DOS from a cassette tape or actually from a WAV file that I was playing from the PC. This is much preferred. So if you haven't done this yet, you'll really enjoy having a HDB DOS come right up. Of course, if you have a Coco SDC, you already have that. And uh, that's also another convenient way to, to run DriveWire 3. Okay, so there were two or three different ways that you can use EEPROM adapters to adapt the 28-pin ROMs to the 24-pin sockets. I hope you find some of that useful, and let me know your thoughts on how you're using EEPROM adapters. Uh, maybe you have adapter boardlets that make it a lot easier. I know that wiring is tedious when you try to make the adapter, and uh, so let me know in the comments if you have good solutions for that. And until next time, see you then.